Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Good to see you all here. Welcome to those who are joining us virtually, whatever day or time that you might be, um, especially uh, as we gather to uh, worship. Um, you see the order of service, and I think everything is okay. Um, with that, uh, we will find out as we go through this. Um, what? It's on, isn't it? Yeah, it's on. Are you not hearing me? One, two, one, two. Yeah, it's on. Yeah. Yeah, just, just talk like this the whole service. That's, that's how I do my God voice. This is God. Yeah, yeah. Kirk, Kirk may not have liked that so much, but you know. It's kind of fun, the fun with microphones. Anyway, um, <laughs> now that the stand-up routine is done for the day, let's prepare for worship with the prelude.
Thank you, Francis. That was incredible. And so it is time to become focused, not on our wants or complaints, but on God. In the silent places of my soul, I turn to God, for God alone is our rock and salvation. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the good news of God, saying the time has come, the realm of God is at hand. The realm of God is not very far from any one of us, for in God we live and move and have our being. Jesus said, repent and believe the good news, the time has come. In the silent places of my soul I turn to God, for God alone is our rock and salvation. Let us turn to God and worship together. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant. Renew your creation. Restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. The reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. Our first hymn, number 675. Joyful the 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Kyrie. to God in the highest and peace to God's people Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from the book of Jonah, chapter 3. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 62 responsibly. For God alone I wait in silence. Truly, my hope is in God. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold so that I shall never be shaken. In God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O people. 
pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Those of low estate cannot be trusted. Placed on the scales together, they weigh even less than a breath. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. For God has spoken once, twice I have heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay all according to their deeds. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus loves me while the kids come up for a children's sermon. Chipper this morning. Yeah. What about me? I ate salt. I said yeah. you all are chipper. Oh, That's really? a good thing. Uh, <laughs> I ate salt. You what? I ate salt. He chipped. Well, I'm that's okay. We all do, actually. We're hyper now. That doesn't make I'm you hyper. <laughs> no, it salt doesn't. Salt doesn't. It gives morning. you high blood pressure and it makes. Well, no, never mind. <laughs> so, I wanted to talk to you about something we just heard read, and I believe. You might have heard that story somewhere else today. The story of Jonah. Did you hear about Jonah? Yeah. Where did you hear about Jonah today? Sunday school. In Sunday school, yeah. So do you remember this? Tell me the story. I haven't heard that story in a long time. Tell me the story. That's not the story. <laughs> so what was Jonah doing? He was. He was, fixing, he, was he was fixing his car, right? No, no. 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 There, was to go to there weren't Nava. cars. Okay, so Nava. what was he doing? We're supposed We'd to go to some. I don't even know how to say the name. God told him to, to go, go to some. Place. Nineveh. 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 But right. he went to find a. Went in the water. No. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, he ran away and got on a boat and went yeah. in the water. And like, well, and literally went in the water too, right? Yeah. Remember that part they of the story? Hey, you have. Oh, I have heard it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Tell me the story. I'm getting ahead of you. Um, you so already it's heard it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so how did he end up in the water? Um, <laughs> he, what? He was on a boat. He was on a boat. And he got thrown in. There, oh, was, a there was a storm. Right? Yeah. Right? That was a storm. That's sign language for storm, in case you're wondering. Now I thought it was... And then the people on the God, boat. God. Right. God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me, let, let me kind of merge your story. The people on the boat were scared. They decided it was Jonah's fault, or Jonah said, it's my fault. And they threw him overboard, and the storm stopped, right? And, and then a no, whale ate and him and puked him out. Right. Well, three days. Well, three days, right. Oh, she was right, and, and you're right. Okay, and then what happened? Nineveh. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Um, and, and he went. And he went. And then we heard in our lesson today, he went and said, 40 days and Nineveh will be no more. It will be overthrown. <laughs> and people said, great. Yeah. Right? <coughs> no, they didn't. What'd they do? 
No, they didn't go yippee. They, yippee. they <laughs> felt really bad, and they put on sackcloth. You they know that real wah, rough, wah. itchy stuff? Can you imagine wearing no. that? Can you imagine wearing that? No. Yeah. I'd so be itching. It, you'd be itching. That's the whole I point of it. Even if I was in school, I'd throw it off. Yeah. Well, okay. So, so what's the point of this story? <laughs> to listen to God. Yes, to listen to God. Thank you. That is not a, get thrown in the water. And not get thrown in the water by and, running away. Yeah. And do not get swallowed by a whale. And don't get swallowed by a whale. Yes. Maybe yes. Just, Important safety tip. And if you find a stick it in, stick in the water, just grab it while you're in the whale. Uh, <laughs> okay, I don't think that was part of the story, but that is a good uh, that is a good safety tip. Anyway, listen to God. And know that when God calls you, God is serious because he wants you to do what he has called you to do. Okay? Fold your hands. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, Jesus. Thank, you for today. thank you for today. Thank you for calling us. Thank you for calling us. And keeping us. And keeping us. And loving us. And loving us. And loving as your people. As your people. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Great. Stand up. <clears throat> and let's join in blessing these kids. Children of God. Light so shine before others. And glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Let's sing the gospel acclamation. About that telling of Jonah, there were a few artistic liberties taken in that telling. You might want to read the book. The Holy Gospel according to Mark from the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Did you hear the news? Remember Isaac Newton, right? Not the big fig guy, you know, I I just love that commercial. I'm dating myself every time I do that. Look it up on YouTube. It's a lot of fun. Um, but Isaac Newton, uh, the guy who watched the apple fall and discovered gravity, well, he didn't discover it. He named it. It was already there. He'd been holding him down on the ground where he was sitting. Anyway, that same guy um, came up with the three laws of motion. Anybody know what they are? Don't all raise your hands at once. Okay. I will read them for you because this is part of the news for today. One, every object in a state of uniform motion will remain in that state of motion unless an external force acts upon it. Duh. Force equals mass times acceleration. There's a nifty math problem that goes, the explanation of that. I'm not going to bore you with that. And for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So. These have been standards for a long time of how we understand how and why things move. 
Well, he wrote this in 1687, and it took 42 years for that to get translated into English. 42. Isn't that the answer to the question in Hitchhiker's Guide? Apparently, no readers of that. Oh, yeah, we got one, one grinning. Yes, okay. Again, obscure humor. Um, but he wrote these things in Latin, um, and they got translated. And when they got translated, the person doing the translating did a little bit of a sloppy job with it. Um, we're not going to talk about the second two because it involves way too much math for, for preaching. But the first law should say, every object in a state of uniform motion will remain in that state of motion insofar as an external force uh, acts upon it. I'm glad you were all sitting down for that revelation. In many ways, this is all, this is, this is for real. It was a news story I, I read. Um, this actually was talked about in 1999, and it was so exciting it took until now for it to get talked about. Um, but, it, you know, it sounds like semantics, just exchanging one, uh, one word for another. Um, and in many ways, uh, th that is just what it is. Um, but the way it was translated, the argument goes, is that something could continue to move in a straight line with no forces acting upon it, right? It will not move or change um, unless something acts upon it. But the reality is there's always something um, acting on, on us and on any object moving, whether it's uh, friction of the air or gravity or um, all kinds of things. It could be the wind speed or the spin of the earth or that butterfly sneezing in the Amazon. Um, everything affects everything else, um, which is kind of the point of this law about motion. Um, and I am greatly relieved now that they have settled um, which word truly belongs there. And while this sounds like much ado about nothing, um, it does remind us that while unaffected motion is theoretically possible, it is almost impossible realistically. But, and you knew there was going to be a but, didn't you? Life is full of external forces <clears throat> changing our lives and the world around us. Some of those things we know, hurricanes, floods, the oven breaks, traffic on the highway, or God intervening. Our first lesson has that example. Jonah minding his own business. Then God grabs him and sends him. And Jonah does the rational thing. He goes the other way. He runs, God meets him where he is running to, ends up sending him again via that large fish. Anyway, you heard that story with the kids. Um, Jonah goes into town, speaks the word, and lo and behold, the people change. People hear the word, they are affected by it and saved because of it. Even God changes because of this. Again. An external force, something different happened and change came about. We hear it in our second lesson. Uh, people are called to live differently because God is acting soon. They are to live apart from those external forces that are affecting them, things of life um, that are, that are uh, affecting their well-being. And to live for God alone, at least to do the best they can. And in our gospel lesson, the time is fulfilled, so Jesus begins his public ministry. He offers an invitation to those fishermen, and lives are changed. He asks, and fishermen follow, to leave their business. Two others leave their business and their family to follow Jesus. And all this happens because of an invitation. 
I think you might know where this is going. Look at your own lives. What have been the external forces that have been affecting you, that have changed you, that have changed the direction of your motion, of, of where you were going uh, in your life, or even in your very being? Some of those changes, those external forces, have been good ones, I am sure. Some of them, maybe not. But all of them have affected you insofar as they could. See what I did there? I hope you can think about that and see some of the people who have been, who have been um, an, important, uh, an important influence on you, who helped, helped bring you to new understanding, who helped shape you. I have people I can, I can think of in, in my life uh, from uh, past Sunday school teachers, uh, other pastors, uh, family, uh, whole congregations, uh, even community groups that I've been a part of have been forces for good in my life. And even some of those not so positive events that I got myself into have ended up being a good influence and a direction changer for me. And then, like Jonah, like Paul, like Jesus, I hope you can use those forces for good, that you can use those ways people have affected you and influenced you, you can use those for your living your life in a good way. Uh, in your influencing, and after all, we're all influencers, right? Even if we're not on TikTok or uh, Instagram, um, we can help steer others for good or in good and healthy direction. It's easy to fall off that wagon of being a good influence, but it's important to get back up and get back up on that wagon again, especially in these days where there are conflicts um, at home, sometimes in our homes or abroad. Wars and rumors of wars, our own political processes uh, in chaos, world needs are working for good are being that kind of force for good we are called to act by god we are called to be those beloved people uh, that he created us to be and you know the saying the only thing necessary for evil to triumph in the world is for good people to do nothing nothing is inevitable unless we let it happen whether it means getting involved in a in a political campaign or mentoring elementary school kids getting on town council or working with habitat for humanity work for good make a difference jesus did and he called others to get involved in those actions too. We hear that in our gospel lesson today. How he calls those fishermen. And they hear that call. And they follow Jesus. And that call continues all the way to each one of us. Amen. <clears throat>
Please join in the reading of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit or kneel for the prayers. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessings on the church, the world, and all of creation. God, our rock and deliverance, do not let your church be shaken. We trust you never abandon your promise to the most vulnerable among us. Give your church wisdom and empathy in its varied ministries. God of grace, God, our hope and refuge, you place the fish in the sea. Guide our care of oceans and all creatures that live in them. Hold us accountable for actions that endanger water sources and the people who depend on them. God of grace. God, who proclaims judgment and offers mercy, we commend to your care all those who serve in the military, especially Jeffrey Kuhn, Warren Kuhn, and Keenan Miller. Defend them by day and give them courage and let them sense your loving presence among God of grace. God who cares for the suffering, care for survivors of assault and sexual abuse and sustain all who minister to them. Keep safe any who live under threat of violence, those living in poverty and any among us who are ill or in pain, especially Lois Wolf, Bob and Ann Labe, Tom Yusko, Joe Fanticone, Mary and Pete DeRocher, Kyle, Bar Kyle Barrowcliffe, Shelley Putman, Putman, and those we name aloud or within our hearts. God of grace. God of resurrection and new life. As the first disciples shared the good news, empower us and this faith community to be open to your call especially the Slusser family, the Snyder family, and the Stedge family. When we are uncertain of your call, assure us when we have strayed from your ways, redirect us. God of grace. God who holds the saints against your tender bosom, we trust you welcome them into your care. Comfort those who grieve, even as we place our hope in your salvation. God of grace. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, 
we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another and those attending virtually.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, Our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, One God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray as our Lord Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At Jesus' table, heaven and earth are joined as one. Come and see. You may be seated. As we join in the Lord's Supper this day, all are welcome at the table. Please come forward following the usher's direction and receive the meal Jesus has prepared for us. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. 
Those who are able, please rise. <clears throat> and with all those joining us uh, virtually, Bill and Lois, uh, Sharon, Deb, Diane, Caitlin, Gretchen, Diana, Jim, Susan, Emma, uh, Beattie, Keith, and Doreen, and all those others, now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We have some announcements for today. Good morning. The Social Justice Task Force invites everyone to join us in the Fellowship Hall after worship. We are having the second of our discussions on the war in Gaza. Um, we have hot soup, good bread <laughs> to fortify you for the discussion and warm you a little bit. Hope to see you there. When I filled the uh, libraries at each end of the block today, I noticed a lot of paths through the snow. So a lot of people are coming, and we our supply of books upstairs is getting lower. So if you have any books that you would like to donate, we would lovely ha l be glad to have them, especially for the young adults. Those are the ones that seem to need it, and they have specifically asked for the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew. Um, just to a reminder, our next our, our uh, annual meeting is uh, next Sunday after service. It'll begin at noon. There will also be a Zoom link coming out this week, and you all should have received the annual report via email. Uh, so I uh, hope we would like you to review that before the meeting. I know that there are some hard copies that Tina has printed and are in the back of the sanctuary, but please review the reports before the annual meeting uh, so we don't spend time doing that actually at, at the meeting. Uh, so, and I will also be putting a link for that on the um, website as well, and because I realize I still have last year's annual report there. Um, the other piece that I have on the website that I just put on there was a link to the calendar. And so this links directly to the most up-to-date calendar that Tina has. And I should also note that her, t her calendar is only as up-to-date as the information that she has. So as soon as you know you have an event, please email her so she can get it on the calendar so there, we don't have any um, overlaps. Thank you. Those who are able, please rise for the benediction. <clears throat> Go.
God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless and remain with you always. Amen. Our final hymn, number 810. Go in peace. You are God's beloved. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.